but yeah, I just kind of just record these immediately just to see what happens in case there's anything amazing that happens from the outset. But so far, not so much. It's just people rambling at the start. But um, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here and honor to be asked. No problem at all. So if you could just give yourself just a bit of a, a brief introduction, just who are you and uh, what you do for a living? No problem. Uh, my name is Tim Patton. I'm an IT director for a manufacturing company in Antrim called Sam Mouldings. We make MDF skirting and architecture for the home improvement industry. So I've been here for 20 years. Uh, so so I can't find the door. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Although being the IT director, it's not, it's not quite why we had you on the podcast. Um, it was something uh, happened. Kind of, Pardon? No, I was kind of sure that I was dodging that one for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. It's um, I'm sure I'm sure you could talk about IT for for an hour or more, but um, yeah, I could just watch your listeners' numbers just deteriorate. Drop <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. We might find a niche in the in the IT fans. I don't know how many IT fans are out there, but you never know. Yeah, but you're right. It's sort of the big thing. The biggest event in my life so far, apart from my daughters and getting married, I have to say that. Uh, <laughs> of course. Is uh, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's two years ago. And how did that how did that come about exactly? Well, it's kind of been uh, when I think about it now, it's been it was a bit of a journey. Um uh, I think the first time I noticed was I was sitting typing in my desk one day and noticed my thumb was twitching, my left thumb was twitching and voluntary. I thought immediately I sort of thought, well, you know, RSI, too much typing, that kind of thing, many years as an IT guy. Mm. Uh, so, but it turned out, you know, um, it just got progressively worse. And then so, is it something then you, did you have any idea that that's what it would be or was it, did it take a, did it take a while for it to, for, to get the diagnosis? It took a while. Probably the, the diagnosis itself was from the first time the word Parkinson's was mentioned was probably about two years, two and a half years. Um, and <clears throat> it all came about. I played play a lot of golf and played golf up at Whitehead Golf Club for many years. Yeah. And uh, my shoulder got sore, so I went to a guy, shoulder surgery Ireland. And uh, he was sort of, there was a problem with my shoulder, sort of just too much golf. But I was standing one day and my arm was shaking and the guy, the consultant guy said, does it, does it do it all the time? And I said, yes. And I just thought it was to do with the shoulder industry, but he said, no, there's something going on there. So he sent me to the Ulster Clinic um, and that's when I went there. The, the guy first said, did lots of tests and then he sort of suggested this could be Parkinson's. So immediately it was a bit sort of, a, oh my God, you know, what's this? So you go back home and do a bit of re- Google research, which is probably not a good thing to do. No, that's um, how much. How much did you know? How much? How much did you know beforehand? Because in my experience, my dad's dad had Parkinson's, so the only experience or the only thing I knew about Parkinson's was pretty much the <clears throat> like the hand shaking or the, like just the involuntary shaking. But there's more to it than that, isn't there? <clears throat> yes, yeah, not a lot more. I mean, initially Parkinson's for me was a ch- chat show host on Saturday night. <laughs> yeah. You know, some guy got attacked by an emu. <laughs> um, you know, so. And um, it's amazing when you find out sort of the number of people who actually have Parkinson's. Obviously, the most famous one is probably Michael J. Fox. Yeah. And he's done a lot of work for uh, the research and trying to find cures and stuff like that. But you've got people like Kid Jensen, the DJ, uh, Jeremy Paxman sort of come out there, uh, Billy Connolly. Oh, yes. Um, you know, so there's an awful lot of us. Very talented people. Yeah. It's, a, it's one of those things that sort of I was making people laugh the other day saying as soon as I get diagnosed everybody comes out and wants to happen. <laughs> it seems to be but how in, in terms of them whenever you were whenever you were first diagnosed how um how much would you say your life changed was it very drastically or was it more of a gradual thing? I think uh, I kind of sort of people don't really, when I was diagnosed it was the fourth of June 2019 in the, in the city hospital at uh, four o'clock and the consultant Mr. McKinley said definitely it's Parkinson's and it was like a, it was almost like a massive weight was over my shoulders right because for the two and a half years before somebody when somebody suggested it 
you know, it was always, it could be, it could be, it could be, you know, yeah. now it was def- now it definitely was. So you can actually do something about it. Yeah. I think sometimes with things like that, it's, mm-hmm. it's almost the, like the unknown or the not knowing is the part that kind of makes you overthink it. And that's obviously the podcast I'm kind of touching on mental health as well. So I imagine that was maybe one of the hardest parts was not knowing because then you didn't really know how to prepare for it. Yeah, exactly. Um, it was, you know, you couldn't sort of begin any treatment to sort of, you know, you read about sort of initiatives and programs and mm. help, help that's out there because there's tons of help. You know, I'm a big fan of Parkinson's UK. I've done some fantastic work and you know, yeah. do as much as I can to help them. Um, but, you know, getting that diagnosis, I came straight out of the consultant's room and signed up for medical tests. Right. Um, so it was a girl from Queens um, sort of doing sort of research for her final, final paper. So I went and did some tests with her um, just to sort of give it, because I was just so determined to give something back. Yeah. And you were happy to be the guinea pig? I was, yes. I had the one of those skull caps on with all the wires coming out of it. And, you know, <laughs> It was not, not, not the finest look, but it was it was fun to do. Yeah, and time, so then was that that was kind of pretty much brand new research, and did did they or did you or did they learn new things from that? I think they're trying to sort of work out what uh, Parkinson's. I think it was linked between Parkinson's, dementia, and various other diseases. Um, right. Okay. You know, um, Parkinson's is a funny one. You know, Parkinson's won't, you, you won't die of Parkinson's. You die yeah. with Parkinson's. Right, okay. You know, yeah. But it's other things catch up with you. Yeah, it's, it's um, something that then leads to other things, possibly. Or... It can do. I mean, there's, there's, there's about 40 symptoms of Parkinson's. You mentioned, you know, the key one is the tremors, uh, yeah. which are can be a pain in the backside sometimes. Yeah. Especially if you're trying to sort of uh, screen a light bulb and things like that. Um, <laughs> I imagine. <clears throat> You know, but um, you know, I think there's other ones to do with sort of the mental health side. It's quite tough. Yeah, anxiety, and you know, you kind of get stressed out easier. Yeah, I think. Um, does that, do you think that comes from actually? It comes from Parkinson's itself, or is it more to do with maybe the other symptoms, which then create that anxiety? You kind of you kind of create it yourself because I'm very self conscious. I think everybody with it becomes quite self conscious, and uh, you know yeah. I'm sort of sitting here, I'm shaking like a leaf, and people sort of say, "Well, you know, we never noticed," and your speech gets funny, you lose your sense of taste, taste and smell, and mm. um, you find chewing difficult. Um, mm. You know, uh, you turn a lot more saliva, so you drool quite a bit. Mm. But like it's a bit like living with Homer Simpson. <laughs> But you're a lot smarter than Homer Simpson, thankfully. <laughs> and uh, plus, I'm not yellow. <laughs> that's not a, that's not a symptom, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> it's more John. It's more jaundice, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. And um, just touching on, you were saying about losing your uh, sense of taste and smell. Is that um, how did that change then? Did your would your dad, I suppose, would have had to have changed then to try and find things that work for you? Yeah, it's it's uh, you kind of go through um, things that were sort of you really enjoyed um, sort of become quite bland, and the danger is you sort of whack sort of spicy sauces and salt and everything to try and get a bit of taste. Yeah, you know, so uh, we've been through sort of a journey to try and sort of find things I like, and my favourite at the moment is Marmite flavoured flavored peanut butter. Right. You know, which is a, you know it's one of the sort of you know like it or love it kind of thing, but it's just whatever. Whatever sort of flavor combos going on there, just I find it really good. <laughs> it just seems to be one of those things that work. It's not. It's not something I. I've, I don't think I've ever tried. I think it's one of those things because it's such a. You'll either love it or hate it. I'm scared of hating it, so I just don't even try it. <laughs> yeah, I would recommend giving it a go. It's uh, it's particularly good. Yeah. But, uh, you you, you kind of have to change your diet a wee bit, and things like you know, I uh, was doing an interview for work here the other day. Mm-hmm. I was sort of saying, you know, uh, with lockdown ending and restaurants opening, it would be lovely to go out for a big, big juicy steak. Mm. But the problems are I couldn't cut it, I couldn't chew it, and I couldn't swallow it. Yeah. <laughs> right. <clears throat> I said, but it's things like that there. It's, I suppose, as well, within the, li- like within the last year, especially during the lockdowns and stuff, has it has it helped you in any way or has it been more, has it been a hindrance in any way? I was thinking about this and because uh, somebody else asked me the question, I think lockdown suited me, to be honest. I mean, that's yeah. probably a terrible thing to say. 
No, you know, no. People, are, people are dying to get out there and get back out. But, you know, if you think about sort of the, what we're doing at the minute, we've got a Zoom call, which is showing sort of your top half. Yeah. Um, you know, you're sort of, you're not getting, you don't have to sort of walk awkwardly through the room or, you know, try and sort of lift a coffee cup. Yeah. So, you, you know, you're, you're doing everything sort of in your own terms, maybe. Maybe that's the best way to put it. You know, you're yeah. sort of presenting yourself and it's just basically a newsreader sort of the, the, the top half. Oh yeah, is your is your video on? Actually, I'm just realizing I can't see your video. Let me check. It's not clear. No, there we go. No, <laughs> there we go. I wasn't sure. <laughs> no, you're all right. You like my earrings? <laughs> I do. I do. Very nice. I struggled. I know we're kind of going off on the tangent here with the podcast, but. I've struggled. Obviously, we've moved into the new apartment, and I've every time I do a podcast, I've literally to flip the room around and then just bring the tree a little bit over <laughs> to try and add a little something. Yeah, well, I thought I'd do with my sort of full notice boards, which shows my collection of drawing pens. <laughs> Not too many notes on the notice board, then. No, I try to keep it in my normal. <laughs> Very good. Um, so we were touching on the lockdown. As you say, it's kind of helped you, and it's it's something I've talked about on the podcast before about how, yes, it's been awful for the past year or so for most people, but it's definitely lent itself, I think, to people who maybe, maybe just aren't as outgoing or are just more suited to either being in the house or just being by themselves a little bit more because it's it's been a bit of a shock for me. I started back to work a couple of weeks ago and yeah. there's times where I've struggled because it's just going from one extreme to the other. But you say that's definitely helped you? It's definitely helped. And the company you work for, we're quite fortunate because obviously supplying to the DIY world, um, everybody was doing up their houses. So we were working right through pretty much. Um, so I was doing sort of one or two days a week at home and then the rest in, in, the, in the office, but the office was quiet. Yeah. So, you know, it, it kind of the environment kind of suited me and, and I've kind of noticed now with everybody back and the roads are busier and the shops open, it's, it's, it's back to a slightly more chaotic world, which was always going to happen and it was a necessity, you know, you couldn't avoid it, but at the same time, the, the lockdown world maybe suited me a little bit better. Yeah, and I think that's something that people have... It's definitely, I think it's definitely helped people in a way. So it's, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a strange one, as you say. It's kind of, you feel bad almost saying that I'm really enjoying these lockdowns. Yeah, exactly. Um, I've never been sort of, I generated sort of a few projects myself, you know, to keep myself busy. Obviously, the house got decorated. Yeah. And uh, built myself a workbench in the storage bench in the garage. Got the power tools out. And uh, no fingers were lost. So that was a bit of a challenge. But, yeah. You know, it was it was always about finding things to do, sort of little projects to keep yourself busy. Yeah. Um, you know, um, I think so. we were I think we were spoiled as well with the first I've said before, the first lockdown was the best lockdown. <laughs> it was the great weather and everything. And obviously with the other lockdowns, like it's the same with films, like the sequels are never as good. <laughs> Yeah, it was like Godfather 1, 2, and 3. By the time we got to 3, it was, it was, it was a bit of rubbish. Yeah, it's like those American TV series. Like, they go to 8, 9, 10, 11 seasons. Like we, the first one was good, but you, you could have just left it at that. That was enough. We had fun. Yeah, draw a line. Move on. <laughs> um, so you talked a bit as well about um, like Parkins and GK. Have you, have you done things with them before in the past? Um, with the diagnosis sort of kicking off in 2019, we were doing we were planning to do sort of things. Uh, you know, I'm actually signed up to do sort of media interviews for them and things like that. Right. Okay. And um, I think I'm going to be the face of Parkinson's, maybe. <laughs> that's that's pretty, yeah. that's pretty good. So Part- um, I yeah. think the, we were we were signed up to do the daughters and I were signed up to do zip wire across the lagging. Right. Okay. But it got, it got postponed, so uh, I think it's going to be back on this year. Oh, fantastic! That'll be good. So that's that just you're trying to raise money then, just online. To... Yeah, just a bit of sponsorship. Um, you know, obviously we've done a few bits and pieces, sponsored walks and things like that. But in terms of my journey, the COVID thing sort of came along and sort of stymied a lot of stuff we were planning to do. But it's all just put on hold, and it'll it'll come back and. Uh, I'll get out there and do some fundraising and have fun with it, fun at the same time. 
Well, that's, I think that's one of the biggest parts of it when it comes to things like this. Obviously, Parkinson's is a very, it's a very serious disease. But um, I think if you can find find those things that help you, which can then possibly help other people. So what and what would you say then? Have you been? What have your coping mechanisms been? I think it's very much sort of trying to, you know, trying to defeat the disease in some ways and try and sort of bring normal to Parkinson's. Yeah. You know, thinking about things that cause me problems, I used to travel across to the to main, across to England quite a bit because we have a factory over there. Mm-hmm. One of the things that bothered me a lot was getting to the airport. You had to take your belt off. Right. Okay. You know, it sounds a bit silly, but trying to get your belt on when you've got Parkinson's can be a bit of a challenge. Yeah. So I just I discovered these belts are completely plastic. Right. And um, yeah. so basically, they don't beep. You don't, you don't have to take them off to go through the scanner. Right. Okay. That's not, that's not things like that there. I suppose that it probably wasn't until you went to do it that you realized that this this is such a challenge now. Yeah, so when you go through this, go through secured and you're standing on the far side trying to get your belt on and, you know, you're feeling like an idiot because you're shaking like a you know, James mm-hmm. Bond's cocktail shaker. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's just, it gets a bit frustrating. So rather than sort of just, you know, don't do it, I'd rather sort of think of ways to try and make it better, make it easier. Yeah, a bit, a bit like shoes. Instead, it's, it's laces are a pain. Mm. But buttons, buttons are buttons and zippers and laces are the, 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 the devil's work. You're trying to get those <laughs> things done. I don't know. It's things that most people just take for granted, and I'm sure yourself probably took them for granted pre 2019. Yeah, I mean, there's a. Some of the symptoms, the things that go wrong, or um, your writing gets really so small. Right. Um, you know, so everyone just, it's really weird and sort of, it's a bit sort of like having a sticker book. Right. You know, sort of when you use for football stickers and think it was it's like a Parkinson's sticker book and you go, oh, I've got that one, I've got that one, I've got that one. <laughs> you know, uh, you, you, your voice and your volume of your voice gets really low. You get a Parkinson's mask, which is basically, you know, this sort of gaunt look in your face. Right. Okay. You know, so. Have you met other have you met other people with Parkinson's to maybe try and swap some of your stickers? That's a good point, actually. You know, <laughs> I, I don't think I've actually met anybody who has Parkinson's. Um, Parkinson's UK run a lot of events. I was talking to one of the girls uh, a couple of weeks ago and she was saying, you know, now the sort of lockdowns ended, so they're going to start them up again. Yeah. There's one one's a Parkinson's cafe. Right, okay. You know, which must be you know clean up after us. <laughs> Uh, Coffee everywhere. You have to wear, have to wear, a, wear a Mac. <laughs> and, uh, I know, the, depends who's surfing the coffee, I suppose. Like, but I, when the first I met, they used to call me Tim Half Cup in here, right? Because it was my turn to get the coffee because you had to walk down the corridor. It was by the time you got there, you need half a cup of coffee. <laughs> Uh, dear. Well, that's um, it. It's, I think it's having it's having that sort of attitude. I think is is fantastic for things. I guess, and I suppose with. It's your sense of humor is that it's probably helped you in a way because i think if you always had that sort of doom and gloom attitude like maybe you've developed a new symptom or you find something different it's going to probably just make you spiral if you continually see the sort of downside to it all. i know obviously there are downsides but it's keeping that sort of keeping your spirits up i suppose yeah. has probably helped you it does and humor sort of is my crutch it gets me through i mean there's you know, it, it is a terrible disease, and I'm sure people react in different ways. And I read a lot of things about people getting very depressed, but mm. you know, I mean, um, like when I was talking to a girl from Parkinson's UK, you know, we were having a laugh because they do, as well as a cafe, they do a, a dance class, they do strictly come dancing, right? Okay, as long as you can do the hokey cokey and shake it all about, <laughs> or dance anything, anything by shaking Stephen, and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be, cool. <laughs> be quite, be quite a night. <laughs> Yeah. And so how the first thing, sorry, one of the things was we were sitting sort of my daughter's and I was sitting going through jobs I couldn't do anymore. Right. Like bomb disposal and uh, surgeon. <laughs> no, nobody ever brings, brings me, buys me that board game operation because I'm no. pretty crap at that. <laughs> um, sports are pretty difficult, like uh, darts and javelin. You know, but, uh, just but, just very, know. very dangerous, I imagine. Yeah, anything with a pointy end. <laughs> Just make sure you stand behind you. 
Well, it's, 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 I play golf, and golf is my chosen sport. Now I'm really rubbish at it now, but uh, yeah. the, the exercise and the, the banter is really good. Yeah. So the, the, the guys that I play with sort of basically say, well, if you stand in the fairway in front of him, you're safe because the ball's never going to go there. <laughs> it's all right. And how, how has your golf changed? Because as you say, maybe you aren't as, maybe you aren't as good as you used to be, but you can still play. I'm still playing, still have to get around the course, but that's what handicaps for in golf. And it's a good game because the higher your handicap, the more shots you get. I mean, I play off 27 now, which is means I get 27 shots around. I'm playing with guys who get six shots around, but you know, oh, really? that's how it levels out. Right, okay. You know, that's what makes it uh, makes it interesting, it keeps me competitive in theory. Yeah. But uh, you know, basically, you're standing there and you tell your body to swing the club, and your body goes, no. <laughs> it just uh, doesn't doesn't communicate and sometimes so it's, it's, it can can be challenging but at the same time it's it's the camaraderie the, the banter and getting out in the sunshine and getting exercise you know you're walking four miles ten thousand steps around oh yeah and that's you great know, for the that's great for the head as well absolutely and the exercise is one of the greatest uh things to help with combat parkinson's you know the more exercise you get the birds well, boxing is very good apparently i haven't tried that yet <laughs> right, okay. so, so, still looking for volunteers <laughs> then your body might just start throwing punches that you're not even planning it could be you know it could be that would be quite um, good though because if, if you don't know you're throwing a punch then they, they, your opponent doesn't know you're throwing a punch either <laughs> just blame on the Parkinson's and just go oh it wasn't, it wasn't me it was an outbreak <laughs> Mr Parkinson <laughs> as long as it's during a fight it's okay <laughs> Exactly, not during a board meeting or anything like that. <laughs> no, but that's just talking about that as well. Like you were saying about um, obviously your daughters and then your friends, and that you play golf with. Um, would you say anything changed? Like, did people like try and treat you differently whenever you were diagnosed? Um, I don't think so. I think pretty much certainly the family was pretty much the same. Um, you know. Friends, I think, sort of didn't realize. I don't think I got my sense of humor. I didn't understand that I was making fun of myself. Yeah. In some ways, you know, I think now they get it okay. Um, yeah. But everybody's, you know, people would sort of offer to help you when you're trying to lift things. And you're trying to do things or, you know, you can see you're having sort of difficulty. And sometimes I want to push people away. But yeah. people, I know everybody's generally trying to do it to help. Yeah. I think that's I think that's sometimes a difficult part because you're obviously you were so independent before and still are, but um, I imagine you also don't want that side of it where people are rushing to help you whenever you are still capable of doing things. Yeah, I think one of the bigger things was you get encouraged to sort of apply for you know disability. Um, which you're, you know, you're entitled to at the end of the day. You know, when you get a yeah. you get you get, a, get a PIP assessment, and you're it's probably done. And at the end of the day, I've got a blue badge, and it's that sort of thing where you're sort of admitting to people who have a disability. Yeah, and was that mm. something that was quite? Was that something that was quite difficult? Of talking yeah. talking again on the mental health side, was that something that was quite difficult for you to admit at the start? It was. I still feel guilty about it. You know, mm. so people people you know worse off than me. Mm. More, or obviously more deserving of me in some ways and the fact that I can park wherever I like um, you know it's, it's just just new mental makeup in your DNA I think you know you're not doing anything illegal but it still doesn't sit terribly well sometimes that yeah there's people there's, there's worse diseases and worse, in, worse things going on in the world than Parkinson's and with my issues yeah I think that's I think as well though it's because it's not um, it's it's mostly more a physical disease than than mental. I suppose in your head, you don't feel like disabled in any way. It's only maybe whenever you attempt to do things. So then it's hard for your brain to kind of admit that you are because you don't necessarily feel it all the time. Yeah, and I think it's a, that's an it's important balance that as well because you you can push yourself too far. It's important to ask for help. Yeah. and understand the helps there and nobody's sort of trying to push it on you it's it's as much as you want when you want it and um, it's not you know it's not sort of a prerequisite for your life yeah you know as you need help you know just ask and i think the important thing as well is just you know for anybody who's got parkinson's is you know reach out to parkinson's uk and talk to people you know do you're not yeah. alone you know nobody's alone in this you know nice. there's lots of us have it 
Uh, it's a good network of people that offer support. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. So if we go back to the podcast, which sort of touches on what keeps you sane and what drives you insane. We've normally, I've normally with the other podcasts talked about the last year, but I'm going to go back even further. So since 2019, since your diagnosis, what would you say has kept you sane? Um, mostly two things. One is, one is golf and the other is work. Uh, I think being able to work and continue to work. I mean, the company's are very fortunate that the company here and the, the owners have basically said, do what I want. Right. Um, for as long as I can. Um, yeah. I know I know there's going to be a limit to that and will become, the day will come sooner rather than later where I can't. Yeah. But in the time being, I'm just, uh, just let me loose and uh, continue on my merry way, which is very, I'm very eternally grateful to them, you know. Yeah. Um, no, I think you need that. You need that sort of, you need that support. And as well, it's giving you that freedom to almost say, I know my limits, so I'll tell you whenever I've reached my limit. Yes, um, I mean so that that's that's great, and golf's been very good uh, when you can play it. Because obviously lockdowns cause problems. Yeah. Because uh, that that's my that's my release. You know, playing on a Wednesday and a Saturday, particularly badly, probably. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're sort of getting out there and uh, having a bit of crack with your mates. Yeah. And uh, trying to hit a little white ball around a big field. <laughs> yeah, it's a sport that I tried whenever I was a lot younger. Um, me and my friends tried it. And someone walked past me whenever I had a terrible shot and said, oh, don't worry, the first 10 years are the worst. And I was like, I don't know if I have 10 years to commit to this. Yeah, I'm probably in my 15th, 16th year, so it doesn't get any better. <laughs> so 10 years was was a nice way of putting it, maybe. <laughs> it, 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 was a, it was a low estimate. <laughs> yeah. I think it is, though. Um, it's, it's one of those things. You don't, you don't necessarily have to be really good at it, as you said. It's just... It's the release, it's getting outside, it's seeing people, it's doing something you enjoy, which definitely helps keep you seeing. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's as frustrating as it is rewarding. And, you know, you, you play 18 holes and you hit two good shots, and those two good shots are the ones you talk about and having a pint afterwards. Yeah, oh yeah, you forget the one where you lost your ball three times. Yeah, the 150 other shots that become incidental, you know, they were just, you know, yeah. happened. <laughs> so... I think the final thing, obviously, getting me through is my family. Uh, my family's been like a rock. Yeah. Um, so it couldn't be, wouldn't be here without them. Yeah. And you said they've been very supportive since the start of all this, definitely helping out. Yeah. Um, we don't talk about it a lot. We talk about it when I want to talk about it. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's that's the that's the deal. Yeah, that's um, fair. What'll be, what'll be, and what comes, will come. But we'll do it together. Yeah. I think you need that. It's it's not as you say. It's not something you necessarily need to be talking about or even acknowledging all the time. But just knowing that you have that support there is is another thing that just sort of helps keep you going. Yeah. Um, so that's that's really good. So you know, I, I get by. I find ways to do things. Challenge myself. Um, and uh, for me, being able to sort of communicate and promote what Parkinson's means to me. Yeah, and my my journey so far is really important. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. If we move on to the next section, which um is the slightly more fun side of the podcast, well, I like fun. <laughs> and it's it's it, it's something that previous guests have struggled with, just because there's a lot of things that drive us insane these days, and I've made people narrow it down to three so did you prepare three things and if so could you give me your first one i prepared three things and i, I, I challenged myself mentally to, to sort of work out and narrow it down to three things because it could be a long list <laughs> exactly uh, my first one is passwords okay let me i'm just gonna write these down but um why do why do passwords drive you insane because i never remember them there's too many of them and the world's become we're drowning in passwords, we're drowning in two-factor authentication yeah. and captures and uh, facial recognition. Those kind of things is becoming increasingly difficult. Yeah. And for the for the more the older people in the world, it's just becoming sort of a serious challenge. We've got to find a way to make it better. Um, yeah, passwords aren't always the bit. The captcha the captcha thing as well. I 
it drives me insane because it's times where it's like you know click on the traffic lights and you're looking at a square going is that like is that yeah, tiny exactly. black <laughs> and you're, you're standing there you're waiting for the you know the, the, the countdown's ticking on your bag your tickets from Take yeah. a master and you're trying to work out which one's a traffic light or which one's a zebra crossing. Uh, you know, zebra. We spend so much of our life sort of fighting the, these passwords. You know, is, yeah. it a, is it a capitalized or it has to be eight characters long? So, you know, use uh, you know, particular sort of punctuation marks. Yeah. Six numbers, two letters, you know, when you're your, your cat's first first day out. <laughs> exactly. I know it's, I remember changing the password. It wasn't that long. I actually can't remember what it was, but... Um... I've changed my. I think I changed. I've changed my password because I couldn't, because I couldn't remember it. So I was like, right, I'm gonna change it to this password that I remember. And as soon as I did it, it says, "Oh no, you can't use a password that you've previously used." And I was just thinking, I used that because I remember it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because it was safe. Yeah, exactly. No one else. No one else knows it. But my my parents are are a nightmare for it <laughs> every time I, every time they say oh i'm locked out of this i'm locked out of this what's your password I, I, I don't know so it's now i got to the stage where i have given them passwords so i have to remember my passwords and their passwords that's even more challenging that's quite cool <laughs> it's definitely you know, and, 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 and obviously in the office here we have, you know we're very we're cloud-based quite a bit now so people need to sort of have their own sort of secure passwords yeah and they discover, you know, it's hello one, the next month it's hello two, hello three, <laughs> and so on, because, you know, the, the software allows that. Yeah. And Microsoft are changing, for example, to their office package, not to get into too much IT speak, but yeah. they're, they're, going, they're going two-factor authentication. So, you know, it's going to be a, a 70 users going to be sort of on the phone every day going, what's my password? They are. I don't know. It's mad. It's good. It is getting to the stage now, though, where, as you say, like the whole two-factor thing where they'll email you, or text you and you have to do that and you have to do your face and then you have to go outside and ring your doorbell and you have to come back in and you have to phone them and it's just, it's getting too much <laughs> yeah it's just i mean it's it's uh it's it's a it's crazy but you know, i can understand why it has to be this way but yeah you know just there's got to be a better way to do it yeah no 100 percent, definitely and of course you get facial recognition sort of it was buggered up by everybody wearing masks yeah that was that was plus it's not everybody, a, it's quite good, but I know I know twins actually who can use their facial recognition on it. So I don't know what they're using exactly, but it's obviously not that advanced if they can't tell the difference between the twins. Yeah, it's a bit scary. Yeah, so that that works, but it's it's strange. And sometimes as well, I'll maybe wake up in the morning and try and use my facial recognition, and it won't recognize me. But it's maybe just because it's first thing in the morning. So it's basically your phone saying you look so rough that you don't look like yourself. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like it's uh, it's critiquing you sort of. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like sort of. I tried I've tried many times to use obviously with the, the tremors to use you know voice assistants like Siri and things like that. Yeah, um, I always remember one of the funniest things Siri did was, was down leaving Dublin Airport with a, a friend one time and we were going to Nice. Right. And I said hi Siri and I said what do you want? I said navigate to Nice. I turned around and I says I don't know your niece and I don't know you. <laughs> so, <laughs> sometimes sometimes they're nearly nearly too intelligent as well but i think i find it quite i find voice not sort of deviated for passwords but voice assistants become quite yeah. quite funny yeah i know 100 percent, and it's i think i i talked about it on one of the other podcasts as well but we have like two of the like the alexis here and it's just a nightmare because they just they both reply and neither of them listen. Yeah, uh, Alexa's quite good. Uh, they're, a bit, they're a bit hidden. This we always we sort of laugh because Victoria, my my daughter, obviously she travels with me to work, and uh, yeah. you know we sort of ask her to play this particular song, and it gets completely wrong. We end up sort of this, you know, having to laugh. Yeah. And his pronunciation: Rafa Nadal was Rafa Middle. <laughs> Who he's playing? <laughs> That's brilliant. I see in bed. I because I have an I have one of the Echo Dots by my bed, and the other night I was just about to drift off to sleep, and all of a sudden Alexa just went, uh, "I'm sorry, we don't have that on the playlist." <laughs> <laughs> it's like I don't know what I don't even know what she was listening. There was no voices talking, so 
I don't know who she was talking to. Maybe there's a ghost in here that was trying to play some music. I have no idea. <laughs> Quite cool. You know, it's quite. It can be quite entertaining. Yeah. No, they are um, good. But, uh, passwords. Is, passwords is uh, that's one the of my bad Yeah. So okay, that's the first one. What's number two? Number two will be cyclists. Cyclists, right? <laughs> this could, yeah, this gonna, could go on for a while. I'm going to qualify this now. I'm sure cyclists are lovely people. You know, uh, salt of the earth. You know, really sort of lovely people. They put pull yeah. on that lycra. <laughs> you know, and sort of head out, you know, I just, uh, I, I can't abide it. I have to say, I was a cyclist myself for a while, but I discovered very quickly that it was, and I might as well sort of play, go and play with laser blades and things like that because <laughs> safer. <laughs> it was safer because you're riding down sort of the gutters and everybody in the, you know, the cars are trying to sort of basically sort of knock you off like some sort of pinball. Yeah. Um, you know, I just don't understand why people want to do it. Um, you know, and there's hunting in packs on Sunday morning, particularly going to Whitehead. Yeah. You know, and it's supposed to be environmentally friendly, and there's 30 cars behind the guys. You know, <laughs> sort of pumping longer. out, and taking longer and revving and sort of, you know, trying to sort of work out how to get past and playing Russian <laughs> roulette with the cars coming ahead. <laughs> do Do you think that um, Do you think that sometimes they're doing it on purpose just to just to try and annoy you? I think so. I think they do, you know, and sort of the big thing, obviously, the campaign now where people say they don't pay any road tax, and don't pay any insurance, and the rest of us have to have to sort of you know, stump it up, you know. It's it's just not it's just 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 not right, you know. I've seen guys sort of ri- eating sandwiches, riding bikes and things. Oh, really? And on the way to work, yeah. There's one guy who's sort of eating a sandwich, and he was selling, holding a sandwich in one hand with his packet of two, and eating one with the other hand. <laughs> What was he? Was um, he going? No, was he no hands or was he? Well, he kind of had one finger on the handlebars, you know, a little pinky finger, you know, sort of riding down traffic. Just to balance know. himself. That's 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 ridiculous. <laughs> and then you get the traffic lights to jump on the pavement and sort of ride across the pedestrian crossing, and you have to overtake them again. Yeah. You know, I said lovely people. I'm sure they're really nice, but when they pull on the lycra, just I'm sorry, I just can't. I can't cope. <laughs> it's almost like a like the like the anti superhero. So the lycra is their costume, but then they just turn into very to put it mildly very annoying people yes they become the doctor evil to this world <laughs> yeah just making everyone late that's the thing as well though because i've seen it a few times where if they're going sort of single file and they're right at the curb sometimes it's okay but there's times where you literally see them like taking up the whole road and going like 10 mile an hour <laughs> Yeah, and I appreciate it's difficult because having said that, being a cyclist, you know, you don't want to ride in the gutters. Yeah, exactly. the, the, the inside is where the, the the worst part of the road is. You know, yeah. so really, you, you want to sort of get in the middle of the lane, but yeah, you know, it's it's so difficult. You know, it's it's uh, it's just cars and cycle cars and bikes just aren't compatible on our roads today. You know, there's too many cars, and it's it's, it's downright dangerous at the end of the day for the, yeah. the, the cyclists and the, the drivers. Yeah. I can't think so, of anything more. I can't think of anything worse to do on a Sunday morning than put on some lycra and go cycling. No, I just, I just don't. Uh, I always said I haven't done it. It wasn't, wasn't for me. No. But always, I just I choose to play golf. But, uh, it's equally as bad on Sunday morning. But yeah, and you don't need lycra for that either, which is great. No, God, no. That would, uh, that would be quite a look. You know, I have not sort of sitting behind sort of a bunch of cyclists looking at their backsides. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's unpleasant. <laughs> it's not. No, it's not. It's not what you need. Um, okay, yeah. we'll go with your. We'll go with your final one. And so we've got passwords, and we've got cyclists. What's number three? Controversially, I'm going to have to explain this one. Zara Phillips. Zara, right? Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> now, this is this is a long term bugbear of mine. Sort of many years ago, in the Sports Personality of the Year competition, Darren Clark was beaten into second place by Zara Phillips. I want to see does she do horse riding or something, isn't it? She sits in the horse. The horse should have won. <laughs> the horse should have got the sports personality of the year. You know, being a golfer and a fan of Darren Clark, you've been at a particularly difficult year. He won the Ryder Cup, won yeah. tournaments, and this woman in a horse beat him. You know, and I've never forgiven her. <laughs> that's that's entirely fair, as you say. It's not I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to alienate myself from from. <laughs> she, the... might, she, might, she might want to come in the podcast one time, so be careful. <laughs> no, you know, you never know. But as I say, I don't want to alienate myself from horse riders. Actually, I've got some family members that are horse riders, but I don't think they listen to the podcast yet. Um, 
but I, I don't I don't know how much work she actually does. I, as you say, I think maybe maybe the horse needs a little more credit. I just uh, you know, to me, it was a travesty and injustice of biblical proportions. You know, it just sort of scarred scarred me for many years now. So you still, whenever you can't, let it go. I can't let it go, you know. <laughs> You know, it was just, it was just uh, whenever the announcement came, I just, what? Yeah. <laughs> how's, that, how's that right? How's that fair? No. They give it, instead of giving it, it to the horse and the horse had turned up, you know, I thought, well, it'd be fair enough. I made the speech. and <laughs> Yeah, a few nay, 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 That would be great. Does she actually do... Is it like all the? I, I'm not even sure. I'm so I'm not very educated when it comes to comes to this. But does she do like? Is it like the dressage and all that sort of nonsense, or is it she actually race? Yeah, no, I think she does the uh, three day events. You know, the cross country, the dressage, and the shoe jumping. Which at the end of the day, to be fair, is you know it is it is tough. You know, it was a fact. It was you know one of our own, Darren Clark. You know, as I said. Yeah. So you know. No. Unfortunately, she got she she got the um, she went to my she went to my little book. Yeah. <laughs> well, her and, success and, her success was not falling off the horse. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm sure she had to sort of polish the thing, polish the horse, and whatever whatever you do to horses. <laughs> I'm not too sure, but it's, no, I know I don't I don't know too much about it. I try I tried horse riding when I was about four, maybe three three, four, and um, I was literally on a Shetland pony in a stable and my auntie ran around the room and it wasn't until years later that I realised that Shetland ponies are actually vicious. They yeah, are, I've heard that as well, apparently they sort of the fair set of teeth in them. Yeah, like I went to, have you ever been to the Lammas Fair? Yes, I went there once and it was forced to eat seaweed. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not, it's so not that we, great. No, this, everybody's going, this is great, and they've seaweed sandwiches and things like that. I'm going, uh, no. <laughs> give, 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 them, give them to the cyclists. No, not to me. <laughs> I'd rather not. I've never been in the sea and thought, yeah, that looks tasty. <laughs> no, <definitely> <laughs> um, yeah, so no, I went to the atmosphere and I've seen all these Shetland ponies, and they're so, like, cute they, they look nice and then i just seen the sign saying don't touch them don't go near them they're horrible <laughs> didn't say that but i may as well have yeah i think the last shetland pony i remember was saying was one of those adverts where the thing dance took in the cliff oh yes i remember that i remember that. was not too long ago yeah. the same experience was same experience with donkeys you know yeah the man actually used to keep donkeys she's she lives out um, out in the country and she used to keep donkeys they're so noisy, like ridiculously noisy. Again, you have to be careful because they'll kick you. But yeah, it's it's such a it's such a strange one. Like I, I think it's it's a very middle class thing as well, isn't it? The whole horse riding in those three day events, especially the dressage, because the dressage is basically just the horse dancing, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so it's the horse doing beat it to Michael Jackson or something like that. Yeah. Or, you know, it's basically a horse moonwalking and yeah. You know, that kind of thing, which is which is damn clever, if you ask me. You know, yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. The, again, the horse is doing it, and you know, I'm yeah. not sure what infl- influence the the rider has. If they sort of poke and prod it at certain times, or I'd be much more impressed if they just if they just like turned the lights out and then turned the back on and then, as you say, beat it just started and then a horse just walked out and just started pulling moves to it. Yeah, I mean that's that's the ultimate sort of dressage. <laughs> yeah. Um, you don't see that on Britain's Got Talent either, do you? You've never seen you see people coming out and dancing with their dogs. You've never seen someone bringing out a seven foot mare. No, I mean it's, 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 there must be a whole range of animals out there, like hamsters and meerkats cats <laughs> and things like that. The people I can train to to do that. I'd I'd be much I, if someone could if someone could train a hamster to do dressage, I would give them sports personality of the year, 100%. <laughs> hey, they could cheat and they've got little balls, little hamster balls. <laughs> True, actually. If it was a person in a giant hamster ball and a hamster alongside them, I, I would be yeah, impressed by that. Like doing a duet. <laughs> no, definitely. Um, okay, so that's the, that's your three things. I'm got, that's, that's quite a difficult one, actually. Because I normally so, I, thought, I thought it would challenge you. You see, you know, just you know, listen to your podcast and so so. I'm going to pick ones that sort of push the push the envelope. 
they are tricky ones now because passwords do and absolutely infuriate me as well cyclists i totally i totally understand it <laughs> and zara zara phillips as well that's um it's controversial it's, con- <laughs> it's controversial but <laughs> I, I do like you made a very strong argument <laughs> Mm-hmm. So I think I'm going to I say I don't want to alienate myself because myself because possibly maybe maybe we'll get her on the pod maybe we'll get the horse on the podcast you never know maybe you get a cycling horse <laughs> yeah possibly <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'm gonna to have to put passwords in and obviously we don't want to get rid of passwords I think we just need to get rid of how they're done nowadays and how ridiculous they are and as you say maybe. We need a new way of doing these things. Yeah, we just we need something uniform. We need sort of a standardization. We need common sense to prevail with passwords. You know, they're yeah. not going to go away. They're essential. They're an essential part of our living. Yeah. But we just got to got to sanitize them. We've got to sort of take the pain away from passwords. So um, yeah. Yeah, no, hundred percent. So we'll put we'll put passwords in the bin. Um, so one last one last question, really. Just um, so we'll bring it back to. Um, Bring it back to Parkinson's. If you could go back in time to to when you were first diagnosed, what advice would you give yourself? Oh, good question. Um, mm-hmm. I think you just don't don't jump to the conclusions. Don't don't assume you know everything about this disease. Don't don't uh, and don't for whatever you do you think you've got to deal with this on your own. You've got a family. You've got friends. You've got a master support network that as soon as it appears out of the mess, um, you know, and, and talk to people. You know, the big thing is mental anxiety and mental stress and mental problems come from in many cases bottling things up. Yeah. You know, it can be a challenging. We're all very proud people. We're all very insular. And we've talked about sort of lockdown. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm the sort of person that suits me, sort of, but at the same time, the pressure valve with this kind of disease is to communicate, to talk to people, to talk to experts, to talk to anybody. You know, um, yeah. I, I find that even, you know, doing this will help me, you know, yeah. because, you know, I've been able to sort of tell people my journey, my story. You know, nobody else listens to it. It's still benefiting me. But if, if one yeah. person listens to it and does something about it, then yeah. take something on board that I've said, then that's terrific. It makes, you know, makes my life better. Right. That's great. Um, that's fantastic. I really enjoyed that. And thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate that. We'll do the pleasure. sort of we'll do the awkward goodbye on here and I'll end it and I'm sure we'll have, we'll have a chat afterwards. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>